What up, y'all? John Murray here, and I want to say thank you for tuning in to the YouTube playback of my Facebook Live series, Let's Talk Live. Now, because this version is not live, you won't be a part of the interactive conversation, so don't look for a shout-out. You won't be getting one. However, enjoy the Hot Topics dialogue and follow me on Facebook at John Murray World. That's J-A-W-N-M-U-R-R-A-Y World so that you can catch a live broadcast and be a part of the conversation. Now, let's join Let's Talk Live, already in progress. Um, we are almost at our starting number. You guys are making it very easy tonight. While we're getting started, just want to shout out some people that have been sending me some stuff. I want to thank the people who... Um, uh, make uh, the ear plane, the original earplanes help with in flight discomfort. I like when people send me products that uh, help me with the flying experience. So thank you for this. And uh, I haven't checked them out yet, but uh, thank you. Also, thank you to people who, uh, for, for Beast products, they sent me their, uh, their bar soap, the Beast bar soap. Uh, the Tame the Beast Nut Butter. Get it? Nut Butter. It's like a male product for you to put all over your body. Nut Butter. Hilarious. Uh, and then the Sam Scraper Scrub Bar. So thank you for Beast Products for hooking your boy up. Oh, here's more Beast Products. A little travel pack with the face lotion, uh, the multi-purpose lotion, and... Uh, uh, the beard oil products and stuff. So, thank you, Beast, for my Tame the Beast products. Uh, hey, Perdita. Um, also, want to thank the people behind God's Kids. Uh, new endeavor, new initiative. Check them out on www.gods-kids.com. Uh, they have... Um, uh, uh, what is it? So they, they sent me a t-shirt to go along with uh, their endeavors. It's a concept that was developed over 20 years ago with the objective of connecting and reconnecting people with the principles that identify our relationship to a higher power and plays and shaping character and how important that is to character. So um, kudos to Eric Bryant the founder of God's Kids. They sent me a t-shirt to wear. Um, and yeah, so dealing with all types of, they, they want to end racism, poverty, homophobia, domestic violence, prejudice, hate crime, inequality, just all the, all those things. So look into them and his initiative. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. I want to thank, say thank you to Gwendolyn Quinn. I got the vinyl box set of Aretha Franklin's Amazing Grace, the complete recordings. This coincides with the Amazing Grace film that's in theaters. I don't know if you've seen it. If not, you should. But thank you for the vinyl box sets, Gwen Quinn. We can have some church to this. Look at Aretha giving, giving that leg on the back cover. All right, Re. I see you, Queen of Soul. Um, so, yes, thank you for that. Uh, and everybody who just signed on, I appreciate you. And then I also want to thank the folks at SOL, Strains of Life. They sent me a nice box of products. These are products with pure hemp CBD oil. I won't be taking these to Walt Disney World. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google the story about the great-great-grandmother at Walt Disney World who got arrested for having some CBD oil product that tested for marijuana and she got locked up so yeah, they sent me a whole box of products that i'm going to be checking out their goods and i appreciate them uh shout out to showtime showtime has a uh sent me this uh protect your hands cream it's a lotion uh to coincide with the wu-tang uh documentary i believe it is uh so I haven't tried it because I'm just taking it out the package. Let's see how this. Uh, Kim Davis says, when will Aretha's documentary be available on Blu-ray or DVD? I don't know. 
because it's still in theaters in a lot of places. So, um, and then I was in the mall this weekend and saw, look, look, look at my receipt, receipt flying out the bag. Um, I saw Miss Quad cooking Miss Quad and Barnes and Noble. It was up front on a display. I went in and bought a copy. Ain't that something? They didn't even send me this one. So y'all know I think I'm a secret celebrity chef. And uh, so I'm gonna go and try to make a couple things from this. Cooking with Miss Quad. I enjoy her on Sister Circle Live. I've never really watched um, Married to Medicine, so. Uh, and then, oh, last thing. I went to this award show called the Freedom of Expression Awards at the New Museum here in Washington, D.C. with April Ryan. This was the gift bag. It was a great gift bag. And they have a, um, a, a free and fearless cup for us to make um, drinks. A Moscow Mule. So they got ginger beer and Tito's Vodka. Now this, is a get, this is a good gift bag here. Go home and make me. Oh, and what else it got? Oh, and then Tropical Mule. If you want to make it a mule. It's for all the people who don't and it's, it's a double so I can have a drink with a friend ain't that something yeah so shout out to the Freedom of Expression Awards I had a great time I went and hung out with my friend April Ryan and she presented an award to Ava DuVernay and I met, met Katie Couric that night so many great people so um, and uh, if you don't know and you missed out, you might need to get on YouTube and watch it. It's also on my timeline. Well, I was recently on The Wendy Show. Yep, after two years, I got invited back to The Wendy Show to do the Hot Talk panel. This is the gift bag that they give all the guests. In it, they have... And I saved this just for my Let's Talk Live. I did not open it. I think this is either a throw or a robe. So... Oh, it's comfortable and plush. Oh, wow, this is nice. What is? Oh, it's a robe. Oh, sooky now. I think I might do like safari and start walking around hotels with this. Hold on one second, everybody. Let's see here. It feels like faux fur. Oh, wait a minute. You got the Wendy logo right here. Boy, this is a plush robe. I like this. It's a nice swag bag. It's a lot of swag when you haven't done Let's Talk Live in a few weeks, so. I'm gonna wear this the whole, why do I feel like Gerald Levert? I can only find the love I sing about. Um, yeah, I do, I feel like Gerald Levert. I feel like this is a fur and the haircut and the beard and everything, that's hilarious. Light-skinned Gerald. Um, but yeah, so everybody who just signed on, appreciate you joining us tonight. If you have not, uh, please hit the share button. Let folks know we're here. We're having a good time. We're going to talk about some things. I saw some questions some of you guys asked. I'm going to try to answer them. Um, we got some really interesting hot topics. I'm going to try to be like on it tonight. Just knock some topics out. Not linger too long. Uh, but definitely hit the share button. It would mean a lot to me if you hit that share button. Let the folks know we're here having good dialogue. Listen, I need you to do two things for me. If you have not, I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, follow me on YouTube. Uh, it's my it's backslash my name, J-A-W-N-M-U-R-R-A-Y. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff there. If you ever miss me on television or miss some of my cool events, videos, all that stuff is there and I don't always post it on Facebook. So you definitely want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then also follow me on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is also my name, J-A-W-N-M-U-R-R-A-Y. Um, and again... Uh, hit the share button. Let folks know we're here. Uh, so I got some things I want to talk about. Um, so let's start with my rant. So uh, I got something that really annoys me. And I know people like them and they repost them. And, uh, 
April Ryan posted a video today, which inspired me to want to talk about this today. Um, you know, I don't like these videos. First of all, I don't like videos in general that people post uh, with 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 60 seconds uh, into a church service and you see people shouting and uh, catching the Holy Ghost. I don't like it. I feel like when you give people um, a glimpse of uh, of something that should be a sacred experience out of context, it leaves a lot to interpretation and it isn't as engaging. Like people do, they think it's funny, they think it's witty, uh, they think it's entertaining. But the truth is, if I was a non-believer and somebody was trying to introduce me to the Christian faith and I hear this music and people are in there shucking and bucking and kicking and looking like river dance and some people are doing these choreographed Beyonce lemonade video movements and other people are just, you know, they sliding and hands like this and shooting arrows and just all the foolishness and stuff that goes on when people are praising their savior. When you give people glimpses of that out of context, it really looks foolish to the naked eye. It really looks foolish to people who don't understand the experience. It really is unbecoming of of, of the black church, but overall of Christendom in general. And I, I think it's a very dangerous practice for people to showcase other people's expression of praise as snippets of online entertainment. I think it really compromises the faith. And it's part of the reason that people don't take, um, take the black church seriously. In particular, I'm putting emphasis on that because that's been my faith experience. Um, but even more so, um, I'm really alarmed with this new trend of these people at these graduation services catching the Holy Ghost. And um, I'm not negating what anybody's experience is. I'm not dismissing what anybody's trials and tribulations have been. Um, I, too, am a person who knows the struggle of having to pay for college and uh, having to pay for college books and tuition you know, uh, um, I was a member of a church in Washington, D.C. for many years, the Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church. And the bishop there, Bishop Alfred Owens, he would give me money to pay for books and stuff while I was in college. Because when I was in college, because I ain't come from a privileged background. I was I came from a working household. And even though my mother was married, the reality is that she might as well have been a single mom. So I had to hustle my way through school. And so, um, you know, I understand when people go through these tough journeys and uh, a fight and pinch pennies and and all that stuff to to make it through college but getting on these stages and shouting and catching the holy ghost and shouting into professors and stuff i think it's unseemly i think it's disruptive i think it's disrespectful and i really think people need to stop it is learned behavior I, there is no spirit that hits you that tells you to shout on the stage at your graduation. That's that's self uh, gratification. That's self grandeur. That's that's a me 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 spirit. Um, all eyes on me. Um, um, if you've been through a hard time to get through college, guess what? Tears work. Uh, you could read scientific studies that talk about the healthy uh, manner in which. It is to cry. Crying is one of the most healing and passionate things that you can do. And so you're not going to tell me that uh, that God told you to disrupt this graduation with your holy dance, um, shucking and bucking and hooping and hopping and falling out, and, you, you, lapels coming off and sashes coming off. It's 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 got to stop. And so this, but you know, the black church has taught people that this is praise, that this is. This is how you thank God. Um, no, y'all got to stop that. And I'm not saying that that the expression of praise through the shout or the holy dance or those who are hit by the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I'm not saying all of that is wrong and that needs to stop. But I'm saying doing all of that in public at graduations, again, taking the sacred church experience and doing that stuff in public, no, y'all, y'all got to start telling y'all, y'all friends, y'all members, your cousins, and it's inappropriate. We gotta, uh, we've got to unlearn and unteach all of that stuff. 
I can't stand it. I'm not going to like your video. I'm not going to like your Instagram. I'm not going to share it. It's not funny. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. You're going to look back one day of yourself <laughs> all over the stage at somebody's graduation and be shamed. And you ought to be shamed. Stop it. You better be glad that I ain't president of a university because I'd be holding up your degree for all that shucking and bucking and heeking them and hondering and carrying on on the stages. So y'all need to stop it. So if you like it, then you do it. I'm ashamed of you. If you like it and it works for you, fine. But I don't like it. It's awful. And we need to stop it. It's a mockery of the church. And y'all got to stop teaching these crazy theatrics to people and teaching them that it's acceptable. God is not pleased. God should not be mocked. And y'all mocking him in public. People are quickening and carrying on in grocery stores and stuff. Cut it all out. So that's my rant. All right. Um, all right, listen, this is big time in Hollywood. Um, somebody said on my Instagram, I uh, know on my Facebook timeline, they said, it's a lot of stuff going on in TV right now. But the reality is that, um, 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 this is the season in Hollywood that they call the upfront. So this time of year is when uh, TV networks and studios decide which programming they're going to stick with, which programming they're going to abandon, if they're going to renew shows, if they're going to cancel shows, if they're going to pick up shows or pilots. Um, and so, um, so you see a lot of changes going on. Um, I was devastated uh, uh, late last week with the announcement that Power is going to end after season six. I am a huge Power fan. If I opened up my DVR and the TV behind me right now, and it shows you the hierarchy of shows in order that are a preference for me, Power's right at the top. Power and then How to Get Away with Murder. Um, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. But Power is at the top of the food chain for me. So the idea that Power is going to be going away after this new season, I'm kind of distraught by it. Like, kind of had to take to my bed after the news broke. But not just power, um, you know, and, I, and kudos to Amari Hardwick and to Tori Naughton and the entire cast of that show. They're all going to go on to do really incredible, phenomenal things. But selfishly, I'd like to see the show in at least through season seven. I think seven seasons is a good amount of time for a show to end, but they're going to end in season six. But also ending it after season six will be Empire. So we will get one more season of Empire. It'll premiere in the fall of uh, 2019 and go into 2020 spring. And then after that, Cookie, Luscious, all of the family, Dunzo. And according to the executives at Fox who presented at the upfronts, there are no plans to bring back Jesse Smollett. So Jesse Smollett appears to be over with the show. Um, um, and it's, it's a double whammy for Lee Daniels because he's also losing his other show at Fox, which is Star, uh, Star... Uh, the girl group show that hired about half of the male R&B industry. I mean, Mario, Major, Luke James, all those good brothers was on the show. That show will be going away now. It's done. It's canceled after three seasons. Uh, Fox also got rid of the, the sitcom Rail. CBS got rid of the show. Um, the Family uh, with Tone Bell and Shirley Ralph and... Um, it's a bunch of other shows that have been canceled, but those are some of the most prominent ones. And uh, speaking of cancellations, it was not a good weekend for Steve Harvey. Whoo! Steve Harvey, uh, uh, Hollywood's chosen black host for a significant amount of time, lost two of his shows over the weekend. Uh, um, I already knew that the Steve Harvey show was probably going to go away. Uh, because of uh, NBC's announcement in the fall that the Kelly Clarkson show would be replacing him in all of his time slots. Um, but what I did not see coming was the announcement that Steve would also be removed from NBC's Little Big Shots and that he will be replaced uh, by Melissa McCarthy. She will be taking over as a new host of that show. Um, it's obvious that NBC does not want to be in the Steve Harvey business any longer. So let me kind of explain to you the paradigm shift with Steve Harvey and NBC. 
and I'm just going to stick to the fundamentals of the industry aspect of it. Um, um, there's a lot of chatter about Steve Harvey's personality and uh, being difficult. You all saw the letter that he sent to his staff on the Chicago version of his talk show. Well, you know, you can't look me in my eyes. Don't come to my dressing room. You know, don't talk to me, make an appointment, all that stuff that really got a lot of backlash. Uh, so there, there's the personality side of Steve. I'm just going to focus on Steve, um, uh, just the fundamentals of the Hollywood aspect. So um, in December of 2015, um, Steve Harvey's talent deal with Endemol, the company that produced the original version of his talk show, it ended. Uh, apparently, Steve didn't sign his new talent deal, and that deal set unsigned for about 10 months or so until about October of 2016. We were in the thick of the election season. We were getting ready for the election that November. Um, and apparently Endemol went to Steve and was like, yo, you got to sign this talent deal or we're going to announce that we're officially canceling the Steve Harvey show. That this is the original version of the talk show that had aired for five seasons in Chicago. Um, so instead of Steve, Steve signing the new talent deal and the, apparently the reason he did not want to sign the talent deal was because they wanted him to keep his show in Chicago. The ratings for the show had gone down from about a 2.6 uh, uh, to about a, um, a 1.8, which was like a six point drop. Very significant. But they were doing uh, segments that sponsors were doing. They were shooting in an NBC building in Chicago. So as long as he stayed in Chicago, the show was making enough money for it to continue on. Moving it to L.A., was going to change that variable. Shooting a, a TV show or a talk show in LA is significantly more expensive. The cost goes up. So if a show has ratings that are going down, it can't go to a city where the costs are going to go up because that's not math that co coincides. That's bad math. So Steve wanted to go to LA. They were like, no way. And so Steve's talent agent has a producing division called IMG. So IMG stepped in and said, we're going to take over producing the Steve Harvey show and we're going to move it to L.A. just like our client wanted to. So the next thing we know in the trade publications, uh, which are like the official publications of Hollywood that do like all your big announcements and stuff like Hollywood Reporter, Variety, Deadline. Those are all trade publications in the trades. It said um, Steve Harvey, a uh, new show from Hollywood will have a late night format. Uh, different from Chicago, moving away from the Chicago format, et cetera, et cetera. And then NBC had a statement in it that said, we weren't involved in his decision to move to L.A. We will no longer be a producing partner of the show, but we will still carry him in his time slots. So the translation for that, for people outside the industry who don't know what that meant, was NBC hadn't developed anything to replace Steve. They were kind of ambushed by this idea that Steve was moving to L.A. It wasn't their ideal scenario for him but because they didn't have a replacement show uh ready to put in his time slot they had to stay with steve and continue to carry his show from la even though they weren't necessarily interested and it takes about a year and a half to develop a talk show um you know and uh, if it's fast track about a year um but you have to put in significant time to develop a talk show so once this all happened nbc started to develop a show uh which, which was the kelly clarkson show so Kelly Clarkson has shot a pilot. It uh, tested really well. And uh, NBC has started taking net, uh, meetings with the affiliates to see if the affiliates would be interested in the Kelly Clarkson show. Well, everybody was. So they started getting major interest. Kelly started doing test shows. Things were on and popping with the Kelly Clarkson show. So last fall, NBC returned the favor to Steve Harvey. So in the trades, they announced they were going to be kicking off the Kelly Clarkson show in September of 2019 and that uh, she would be replacing Steve Harvey and all of his time slots with them. Well, that didn't mean necessarily that the Steve Harvey show was canceled, but that meant that he was losing NBC stations, which means immediately he's losing about 60% of the country because these are their owned and operated stations. And let me tell you, um, you can't launch a talk show in 60% of the country as a regional show. So the writing was already on the wall that the Steve Harvey show was going to go away unless IMG was able to go take him to another network or find another partner. The unfortunate thing was 
the ratings had dropped really bad. So when Steve premiered out of Chicago seven years ago, his talk show premiered with about a 2.6 rating, like I already said. When he premiered from L.A., in the fall of 2017, after the Trump White House visit, after kind of making an inflammatory comment about the people in Flint, after all the other backlash he had been getting personally and professionally, in addition to the fact that the show was already having a hard time while leaving uh, Chicago, it premiered with like a 1.6, which is a huge drop. And for the first time in the history of the show, the Wendy Williams show, the Wendy Williams show, outperformed Steve in the ratings. But the Wendy Williams show is m more economically, uh, it's it's cheaper to produce Wendy than it does Steve. So it just wasn't a, it wasn't a good variable for him. So one of the executives at IMG, which is a division of Steve's talent agency, which is producing his new show from LA, did an interview in Ad Week where he basically expressed that the show was bleeding money uh, and that they only were sticking with the show for a second season because Steve was their client and they wanted to see it through. He kind of acknowledged indirectly that the show wasn't a success. So NBC was looking to be out of the Steve Harvey business um, because they didn't like how things happened with the Chicago, uh, for, for the transition from... Uh, Chicago to LA. They were a producing partner initially on the first version of the show. They were no longer a producing partner in the second version of the show. And it just became a very disastrous relationship for them. So in the course of this weekend, Steve Harvey uh, lost two of his four prominent jobs. Um, you know, he still has Family Feud. He still has the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And I mean, don't cry for me, Argentina. He ain't broke. But losing a daytime talk show and syndication and a variety show like Little Big Shots is a significant hit to one's uh, income. So, so that's the Steve Harvey show. That That is uh, me explaining to you, which really is kind of complicated Hollywood speak in the most practical terms possible. I just wanted to help a few people understand it. You know, I know uh, for the people of color who are watching this, uh, Let's Talk Live, um, I know you guys... Um, there's a segment of us that love a conspiracy theory. We love, uh, you know, Illuminati and underground Hollywood and uh, all this other stuff. Uh, and so there have been a lot of chatter like, ooh, well, Steve didn't do the right dance for the right organization. But the truth is that, you know, it sounds like him and NBC had a very uh, unhealthy relationship for about two years. And it took them two years to be able to um, extract their revenge. So... Um, Steve will be fine. He has an amazing agent, uh, one of the most powerful in Hollywood. I'm sure he'll go on to do other things, but um, he might have a little more time to catch up on that sleep that he say rich people don't get because uh, he got two jobs that are no longer in existence. And the people at the talk show, they don't have to worry about not looking them in the thighs and stuff anymore. So, um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, all right, uh, speaking of talk shows, um, I talked about being back on the Wendy Williams show. As you see, I'm wearing my Wendy robe that was in my swag bag. I had a great time at the Wendy show. The people treated me exceptionally well. Uh, the Hot Talk panel appearance is on her YouTube page. Check it out at Wendy, uh, was it, uh, YouTube backslash Wendy Williams show. Um, if you have not checked it out already, I was on with Allie Wentworth and a TV host named Ellie Lee. It was a great time. Um, and then on the top of my timeline on, on uh, Facebook, I, uh, I did a TV show here in Washington, D.C. last week called um, uh, Like It or Not. It was a good time. It was a fast-moving panel show. We talked about Michael Jackson and Madonna and the whole Aisha Curry story. I'm not getting into Aisha Curry today because if you want to see what I think, watch Like It or Not. Uh, we also talked about this hot topic, do men gossip more than women? Um, and it was another good hot topic that we delved into. It was a fun show, a great time. I I'd love for you to watch the clip. It's on the, if you, I mean, if you go on the top of my Facebook page, it is pinned right to the top. Watch the clip, watch the show, uh, and let, like, give me feedback or your comments underneath. I really, really liked it. Um, 
So yeah, and then again, if you've joined us late into this broadcast, I appreciate you for hanging out with me. I hope you hit the share button at some point to let folks know we're here having conversation and dialogue. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, J-A-W-N-M-U-R-R-A-Y, and follow me on Instagram, same name, John Murray, J-A-W-N-M-U-R-R-A-Y. Um, all right, so you, some of you guys sent me some questions about uh, things you wanted me to address tonight, and I want to get to some of those. So um, I'm going here now to read a couple of your questions, and then I'll try to read some from the timeline here as well. Uh, let me see, newest first. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, has the movement of black leads on sitcoms primetime ended with Lee Daniels and Shonda Rhimes? We will need a subscription service like Netflix, who seems to be acquiring an interesting amount of black actors for shows from Joy Butler. Well, here's the thing. Uh, the show, uh, there's a lot. No, the movement for uh, having black leads on dramas and sitcoms has not ended. Um, but TV has become more diverse overall uh, than ever before. Um, um, and yes, subscription services and premium cable have lots of shows with black lead. I just started binge watching The Chai, um, The Shy, I'm sorry, um, from Showtime. I'm four episodes in. I'll probably knock out two more episodes tonight um, after watching WWE Monday Night Raw. But an amazing, phenomenal show. Uh, I just hadn't had the time to get into it, but I'm into it now. It's really good. Um, shout out to my buddy Jacob Lattimore, who's on it. Um, and uh, but the networks are picking up new shows. So like my boy, uh, J. August Richards just got a new show picked up at NBC. Um, the title escapes me off the top of my head. But there are lots of black leads and uh, black principal characters getting picked up on shows. Uh, just some of the shows that we become familiar with are happening to go away and they're ending their reign. So uh, let's see. Some of y'all are giving me comments and remarks um uh, uh deirdre young says do i think the, sh the steve harvey show or star will go to other networks now both of those shows are done like steve harvey's talk show done uh star done empire after one more season will be done um uh celeste walker says what's for snacks i don't have no snacks tonight sorry um uh, rolanda watts told me no more snacks on my let's talk live she doesn't like it when i eat on camera so i'm trying to listen to what she has to say um, and all right, those are the only questions from there. A lot of comments. Um, all right, so, um, Robert Hassan James says he's a top fan. Where's my cake? I Facebook picks the top fan thing, I don't pick them. Uh, I guess it has to do with engagement and activity on a page or something. So, um, let's see. Audrey Johnson said. I wanted to tell you that I understood why you apologize um, for the comment about Kanye's choir, but everyone misspeaks and no one's perfect. You were excellent. Oh, so yeah. So just in case some of you guys don't know, when I was on the Wendy show, listen, doing live TV is tough. Like, it's kind of like when you see one of your favorite singers in concert and they go to hit a run or a note and they don't quite achieve it. Um, it's like, you know where your mind thought you were going. Sometimes you just don't always land the way you want to. So I was talking about the Kanye choir and I wanted to emphasize to them that the choir was a hybrid of, uh, professional singers, some of which that had not been working, but many of which that were having great success outside of the choir. Um, like they would go in and out of the whole Kanye Sunday service on choir thing, um, in between other gigs and tours and stuff like that. Um, and so, and so Ellie Lee, we were talking about the, the church merch that Kanye had and should he be um, uh, selling the church merch? And so Ellie Lee was like, well, what is he doing with all the money from his expensive clothes and stuff? So I jumped in a little sooner than I actually anticipated. I was like, oh, I can tell you what he's doing with the money. You know, Kanye is paying these singers that are out there because what people don't realize, these are professional background and session singers. And so what I just explained to you, I end up kind of jumbling into like one sound bite. So it made it seem like all the singers were out of work when that wasn't really what I intended to convey. So, um, and it was crazy is I have about four 
Well, I thought I had about four or five singers in the group. Um, after I made that comment on Wendy, I found out I had about 10 of my friends singing in that choir. I mean, Lottie Dottie and everybody's in um, the samples. That's what they're called. Um, and so instead of just letting it go like, well, I made a mistake on TV and oops, live TV blunders happen. Um, I, you know, here's the thing. A lot of people have a very effort kind of sensibility. Like it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. But I decided, uh, not because anybody asked me, uh, but I decided to make, after talking to one of my really good friends, Jawan uh, McEaslin, um, I decided that I wanted to just make good on it and apologize because I didn't want nobody to think I was intentionally trying to be shady or offensive or any of that. Because it's the thing, when I want to be intentionally shady or offensive or uh, if I'm trying to read somebody, um, I could do all of that. Like, and I'm pretty effective at it. That wasn't necessarily my intent. So, uh, and so because of that, I wanted to apologize. So, so yeah, so that's what happened. Listen, I, my real friends, people who know me in real life will tell you, I'm the first one I, when I can admit that I'm raw. Uh, if I have a debate with a person and I find out that I'm raw, I'd be calling people for like, guess what? You was right. Like, I, I kind of get a kick out of that. So, y'all never have a problem apologizing or fixing a situation if uh, somebody is uh, offended unintentionally or not. Um, Nicole Marla Jackson. Oh, no, Nicole Maria Jackson uh, said, is New York Undercover coming back? Yes, a reboot of that is coming back. Um, uh, let's see. A bunch of y'all love Rolanda Watts. Uh... Pibwa said eating on camera is a no-no. Um, um, Paula Williams said, I didn't know anything that you said was inappropriate until you apologized. Yeah, that's why sometimes apologizing uh, carries more weight. Like, the average person wouldn't have known I made a mistake on the show. And even though the samples have about only 150 people in them, and I could have dismissed the fact that only a small group of people were upset, I still wanted to make good on that because truth is, I have some really good friends in that group. And again, I don't want nobody um, uh, being intentionally upset. Um, uh, Peggy Law says, so they just acquired some bloggers and news publications uh, say it's a church service. Uh, uh, no, listen, they call it a Sunday service. Those are hired singers uh, that sing in the samples, a choir led by Jason White. They have choir rehearsal on Friday uh, and they gig on Sunday. And it, they do amazing music. Uh, so, yes. Um, let's see. All right, I'm looking for a few more questions. Do I think Tyler Perry Studios will take a hit because of the boycott of Georgia over the abortion law? Uh, from Nicole Scott, good question. Um, and many of you don't know, Georgia, uh, uh, Georgia. Georgia has just put into place this new um, heartbeat law uh, related to abortion. I'm not going to get into that. You can look it up. But a lot of Hollywood production companies... Um, like I was just describing with the Steve Harvey show, it's more economical to shoot in cities outside of Hollywood and New York City. So that's why you often hear of TV shows shooting in Canada, Toronto, uh, Montreal, Vancouver, uh, and Atlanta. Atlanta's really big. Louisiana is really big. Uh, Illinois is really big. Um, some places in the Carolinas also get a lot of TV production work for some of the talk shows like Maury Povich and some of the uh, court shows they shoot in Connecticut because you get tax breaks and 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 a whole lot of opportunities for bringing your shows to these other markets uh, and so uh, but because of Georgia's heartbeat law a lot of productions have decided to pull their shows out of Georgia um, and when a TV show comes into your city, even though they're saving money being there, they generate a lot of money. They spend a lot of money for these cities so and these states. So these states are losing a lot of money when TV shows and movie productions and stuff decide it's no longer advantageous for me to shoot in this city. So uh, in Georgia, um, Tyler Perry has his studios. Um, because Tyler, Sper Tyler Perry owns so much land there and shoots the majority of his own shows there, I don't think that he'll necessarily... Uh, uh, 
take a hit because you know his studios first and foremost are there to benefit him but i don't know how many outside productions will want to come shoot at his studios any longer because of the georgia uh heartbeat um rule so that's that all right more questions uh Um, uh, since NBC is getting rid of all things Steve Harvey, uh, will they get rid of him as the host of Miss Universe and Miss USA? I don't know. There was a pageant on the other night. I don't know if it was USA or Miss America, whatever the case was, but Nick Lachey and Vanessa Manillo, um, um, were hosting it. Uh, let's see. Thanks again, everybody, for the compliments on the haircut. Um, Belinda Bassett, I look very refreshed. Uh, Bridget Little said, do I think they're canceling shows like Empire due to the remake of uh, 90210? No, I think they're canceling these shows because Empire has had a good run. But as everybody knows, it's an expensive show to produce and the ratings are down. And Star's ratings have always been like, eh. Yeah. So that's why they're getting rid of those shows. Um, Nikisha Hurdle says, what do I think about the Jefferson's live show with Jamie Foxx? She says it's going to be a no-no for her. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I've heard the casting. I don't like it. I don't like the casting because it looks like they're going to go with a Latina in the role of Florence the Maid. And Marla Gibbs and what she did with Florence the Maid is so signature and distinctive. I don't like the multicultural casting in that particular role. I mean, if you wanted to make one of the neighbors Latin, um, if you wanted to make the doorman Latin, just anybody in a support character. But what Marla did as Florence the Maid, I don't think anybody else should be playing that. Um, I'm done talking about Kanye's Sunday service. Um... How is Luke Cage and Black? Luke Cage was canceled by Netflix. So Erica Brown, you're a little late on that. You're late like Jet Magazine because you might be about six months to eight months late on that. And Black Lightning is doing great in the ratings. It got renewed for another season on the CW Network. Um, okay. Trying to keep up with y'all questions. Oh, Paula Williams asked me, has, have I been watching Ladies Night? Yes, I have been watching Ladies Night. Um, little known fact, I happened to be in Las Vegas during the time in which Ladies Night, the new reality show on BET uh, starring Salt and Pepper and SWV, was shooting. Um, uh, yeah, I was in Vegas when that show was shooting. Uh, it is no secret that Coco from SWV is one of my best friends. When I started in this business as an intern at like 18 years old, I was working at a radio station here in Washington, D.C. called WPGC. Coco was the first celebrity I ever met. She took a liking to me, and we've been thick as thieves ever since. I love me some Coco, and we'll cut somebody for her. Um, but I've been watching. Uh, it's, it's, I don't necessarily like the tone of the show. Here's the thing. Reality shows got to tell a story, and it really is kind of like improv... This is my opinion. This isn't me speaking matter-of-factly about this show. But these, this is my assessment on reality TV in general. A lot of reality TV, particularly ones done by the production company behind this particular show, I feel as though it's improvisational acting. Uh, they take a story, they gravitate to a story, and the story kind of unfolds. Um, um, and so I don't like how the storyline has started. Because um, it just, it, yeah, it's a little dumb to me. Uh, but I enjoy Salt and Pepper musically. I enjoy uh, SWV immensely. Um, and I don't understand why Salt and Pepper put Spinderella out the group yet again. I guess it will play out on television. But in my humble opinion, without even knowing any of the details, I feel like Spinderella gets a real raw end of the deal with Salt and Pepper. And they got to do better about that. Um. All right, a few more questions, and then I'm going to sign off. Uh, let's see. Stuart Lowry, I believe that the cancellations are due to the fact that Disney owns Fox now. Um, but business is business no matter who owns what. And so if a show is having success in ratings, they don't cancel them. 
And those shows that are leaving and being canceled, most of them are due to ratings. It's, 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 Hollywood is a very uh, cost-driven and financial-driven situation. If shows are having success and making money, they stay on as long as Grey's Anatomy. Shonda Rhimes has left ABC, done a new deal at Netflix for $100 million, and ABC is still renewing Grey's Anatomy because it's a successful show. It's one of the most diverse shows on television. You could pick up right now, not having known the storylines from all the other previous previous seasons, um, and it's so fresh and so captivating with the writing, you could pick up without ever having watched it before. Um, and so it speaks to great writing, it speaks to amazing viewership, and the fact that the show makes money for ABC. So Shonda's gone, but the network is still vested in the show because of the ratings. So ratings uh, really are the key factor for what works in Hollywood. Um, trying to read more of your questions. Have I heard about BET's The Barge movie? Uh, I don't know anything about it. Uh, yes, I saw the Tyra Banks cover on Sports Illustrated. I posted it on my page. Um... Um, Tony Street will miss Steve Harvey on both shows. Sorry. All right. Listen, we've had a good dialogue tonight. Covered a lot of points, asked some questions, had a rant. Uh, if you missed this broadcast, watch it back from the beginning. Uh, and uh, you can still share this. Make sure you subscribe to Instagram and YouTube. And I appreciate y'all hanging out with a brother tonight. I appreciate y'all. Peace.